Good morning and welcome to South West Baptist Church. I wish to just on this Mother's Day firstly welcome you all here. It's great to come apart. It's great to come as a meeting place and especially we're welcoming and also reverencing mothers and thinking of mothers. But first and foremost, our God. So welcome along. You've already, Lord willing, have your Bibles open to 1 Samuel. Thank you for that Bible reading you've had. 1 Samuel, um, we were in the book of 1 Samuel there. And I want to examine a wonderful mother, but also a very spiritual lady. Her song and her poetry is wonderful. It's right up there with the Psalms. And life was very tough for her. And perhaps it was even the toughness of life that brings about the beauty of this story, some of the the um, graciousness of it. I, in my mind, it, it, it looks like a green field with just a, a white lily in the middle and, and this is she's the white lily. It's been said that affliction is the good shepherd's black dog or the affliction is the good shepherd's sheep dog. And we sheeples, we people can understand that. How often has trials come into your life and it's like it's rounded you up and it's brought you back to God? God has used trials, God's used circumstances to bring you back to where you should be. The story of Hannah is interesting because in a sense there's a story within a story and it gives a sense of God's working his purposes out and we think things happen here on uh, our little sphere and it's not connected to the bigger picture of God's purposes and yet it is and this is our God who's going to make a a woman willing to make a sacrifice of a child and she's going to hang on to God and to believe God and and as we look at this story I wonder what God might want to do with your life I wonder what trials you're going through at the moment or you're thinking self this hardship what's the purpose of it and there are many undergoing hardship now with loss of jobs and uh, fear as they go out into the public with this COVID-19 Hannah had three real reasons to be a bitter, resentful woman, but she wasn't. First reason, Hannah was one of two wives to Elkanah, and perhaps she was even his favourite, but she had no children. Look in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 5, 6 and 7, and isn't it good to be able to come apart, to open up the word of God and to consider it? 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 5 But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion for he loved Hannah but the Lord had shut up her womb and her adversary also provoked a sore for to make a fret because the Lord had shut up her womb and as he did so year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord so she provoked her therefore she wept and did not eat Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity of gathering around your word. We thank you. Lord, I thank you for the people that are watching and listening in from wherever that may be. Lord, encourage them. Bless them this day that we remember, especially mothers, but also that we remember that you're the creator of mothers and it's part of your plan. We want to give you all the praise and the glory. Lord, there may be some here that have a special unspoken request upon their heart, we lift that up to you, Lord, for you know all our hearts, you know all our needs. We ask your blessings now as we go through this message, both on the speaker, but especially on the hearers and the watchers. Lord, may the Holy Spirit be working in our hearts to touch according to the needs. We ask this that our Lord Jesus Christ be glorified. Amen. First reason, Hannah could have been resentful even to God, because Peninnah, her the other wife, would cut her to pieces with a tongue about being childless. And she did, it appears, especially so every year when they'd go up to give God thanks, when they'd go up to Shiloh to make offerings to God. And the second reason that she could have been a resentful woman was that, was that in the temple precinct, she went into silent prayer, and the high priest tied her off for being drunk. She didn't deserve that. There's a third reason too. Uh, well, let's go back to the second reason. Um, the priest told her off for being drunk. Have a look at verse 9. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. On 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord 
and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought that she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. Folks, God's representative, who should have been a godly man, had taken her for a drunk. She had a third reason to be bitter, and that was a current belief at the time that it was God that had shut up her womb. Now, we do have God in charge of providence. God is in charge of the womb. He opens and shuts, the scripture says. Um, God's in charge of the happenings that's happening around this world. But there's also a balance in the sense we're living in a fallen world. There are consequences of this being a fallen world around us. And sometimes a woman is barren simply because of simple medical reasons. Sometimes it might even be the man's responsibility uh, for simple medical reasons. And it may also be that God has shut the womb. But Hannah, in her culture, was especially heartbroken with no children and her co-wife having children. And when she does appeal to God, it's like God's representative, God's man there, thought she'd been drinking and told her off. But Hannah kept a focus on God and, and loved God. Let's just take a few steps for a moment, a few steps back, I should say. This is the time of judges. Everybody is doing what they believe right in their own eyes. The nation of Israel sliding into sin. And God's looking for an instrument to, to, to bring the nation back, to, to do a great work through. He's always looking for a man or for a woman that he can use and that's available. Hannah had her problems. And every day, the co-wife, Peninnah, nagged her about it. But there's greater purposes being played out here. Hannah was waiting for a son. But God was waiting for a woman that would hand over her child to him as a... As a um, it's not a sacrifice, but as a, a dedication. A woman that was willing to surrender her child to God. While Hannah prayed, Oh Lord, please give me a son. The Lord, it appears, patiently waited and listened and did nothing. But when Hannah prayed, Oh God, please give me a son and I will give him unto you all the days of his life. God realised that his time of waiting had ended. God's delays always have a purpose. This time of lockdown and social distancing has a purpose. He who sees the beginning, the end from the beginning, he knows how to make all things work together for good to those that are called according to his purpose, even those things that are uncomfortable and unpleasant for us. God's time is always the best time. So there was a great problem. God had a problem. Hannah had a problem. So that brings us to the great prayer. Look in 1 Samuel 1 verse 11. <clears throat> and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give un him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought that she had been drunken. So Hannah's... Lips were moving in silent prayer. But Eli never recognised this. He thought that she'd been drinking. Eli never recognised true prayer. 
sometimes the greatest of prayers are hidden or they're stumbling. Sometimes there's even tears that speak more than our words that are shed to God. Sometimes it's just a deep sigh that God understands and God knows our heart and, and uh, he understands all that we're communicating with him. Hannah was a, a great woman of faith. Verse 7 tells us that year by year Elkanah went up to offer a sacrifice and year by year the other wife, Peninnah, provoked her sore. Why would she be doing that? Variety of reasons, but probably to make a fret. And by implication, <clears throat> she would be telling Hannah that God had shut her womb, that there's no hope for you. And we know that today especially that stress like this can even uh, make it difficult for women to conceive and she was being put under great stress we don't read of Hannah fighting back she seems to be a very tender and sensitive soul we don't read of her telling her co-wife what for but we do read in verse 7 that she wept and she stopped eating she didn't become ensnared in the carnality. She took it all within her. So she, in a sense she maintained her purity of soul. And so her prayers reached the heart of God. Eli had told Hannah off. And then he realises his error and asks God to bless her in prayer. Let's go back to the scripture and again I'm reading from verse 14. Reading from verse 14. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered, said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat. And her countenance was no more sad. Something's changed. Something's changed here. Hannah wants to be a mum and, and out of these bad circumstances and this bad experience she's received a blessing she's turned this for good or it's been turned for good now she has hope now she's eating again and her face is lit up and, and what a great prayer she, she's known that her prayer was answered I've said there was a great problem because Hannah was barren and there was a, a great prayer to a great great God now there's a God's great provision that is to follow, of course, doesn't it? Look in verse 19 and 20. And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after... The, sorry, I'll read that again. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked, of, asked him of the Lord. What a beautiful expression in our scripture. The Lord remembered her. It's got the meaning of God blessed her. God answered that prayer that he's, he was going to. He, he's aware of a need. He's aware of her circumstances. And he's overcome those circumstances. And she falls pregnant. You and I know that God loves to answer prayer. God always answers his promise and sometimes he does so in superb ways. The delay in answering Hannah's prayer over those years brought about an unbelievable blessing. Not only did Hannah receive her boy, but God had now had a dedicated instrument of blessing and the boy had God's bless him upon him for the good of Israel. And the sacrifice made by the brave and faithful woman would find an abiding place in God's 
Holy Scripture, that we've got this story recorded of her and her son Samuel. Hamil, ha, Hannah had promised to give the child back to God's service. I wonder what would have happened if she'd have changed her mind, if she'd reneged on her promise. I wonder if she'd just nursed him and then fondled him and once she'd weaned him and he was ready to go, she said, look, I'm, I'm going to hang on to him. I, I can't let him go. I'll give him later on. I wonder what would have happened. Of course, we're talking about the providence of God. But in the natural course of things, Israel may well have been destroyed. The enemies could come rushing in because Israel would have been um, wicked and in their ways and their thinking. And she may well have lost Samuel in her own life in that invasion if that had happened. But she gave him a cross. And the time comes for the family to go up to Shiloh. And Hannah stays home for the first few years and cares for her child. And uh, until he's weaned, until we would probably say he's on solids, then she goes up with the child and a bullock is slaughtered and the child is presented to the priest Eli. Let's go down to verse 25. We're in 1 Samuel 1, verse 25. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh, my Lord, as thy, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. Writers think the child could have been somewhere between two and three old, two, two and three years old. He's dedicated to God. He's left with Eli the priest. He was an old man at Shiloh. Hannah has invested in the bank of heaven. She's resting in the goodness of God and, her, and his providence over lives. Putting God first in our lives has rewards. Not always the way we think, but putting God's first, God putting God first in our lives has rewards. Look in verse 21. This is 1 Samuel 2 now, 21. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters and the child Samuel grew before the Lord. So Hannah has three more sons and two daughters and Samuel grew before the Lord. He grew in the presence of the Lord. Samuel grew in dark days and there was no open vision of God. There was <clears throat> The word of God seemed rare and but it was in such dark times that Samuel would grow and he would uh, seek out the Lord. And later we remember when he's a young child that Samuel hears the voice of God calling him three times, Samuel! And Samuel runs to Eli and it's not Eli calling him and he realises it's the, the hand of God. I want to slow down for a moment though and think about the mother Hannah. That which she prized most dearly, she was willing to hand over to God. Isn't that interesting? Mothers would understand the incredible bond that they've had, especially with their little small children and the, their suckling children. And the incredible bond they have between them and the child and they would understand what Hannah has done in giving up this one that she loved. But in a very real sense, mothers and fathers, we're to do this with all of our children, to be able to give them up to the Lord. We're to dedicate them to the Lord, even though we keep them at home, in our homes <laughs> during the week and so forth. Um, some children, some parents, I should say, dedicate their children to Channel 22 on television. And the child can sit there and soak all of these things in uh, considerably. And others we know that can dedicate good things to their children. So the children might have school and after school they've got this and they've got that and they've got this and they've got uh, weekend activities all prepared for them. Where do our priorities lie? 
we're really looking forward to meeting again as a church and coming back together and uh, I know uh, people like to go to the back of our church and have a tea or a coffee and, and have a natter and we like to, to stay around and, and talk because fellowship is an important part of it, of church. We're to talk amongst each other and to encourage each other. We're looking forward to it. And I wonder whether parents would say, yes, Sunday school is also an extremely important part. They're dedicating their child and and I've been so thrilled with our Sunday school teachers. I've been having Zoom classes and doing a lot of preparation and putting it up there so that it can be downloaded and viewed and then they get together and they can interact with the children. I think it's 9 o'clock they start their, the presentation, like 9.20 or something or other, they, they do their Zoom classes. Um, but they're investing, Sunday school teachers are investing in the children's lives and the parents that make the effort are investing as well in their children's lives. And God repays us for all that we give him. And he's not a Scrooge. God is no man's debtor. I began with a great problem. Hannah thought her problem was big. She was childless in a culture that expected sons. And she was tormented over being childless. But God would use... Oh, just something's come up on the screen here. I need to get rid of it. Sorry about that. I don't know whether you can see that at where you are, but talking away and this blue patch popped up on my screen. I was just saying God had a... Hannah had a great problem and she thought her problem was big. She brought up her... She was childless in a culture where they, women were... were expected to produce sons and she was tormented over being childless and God would use her desperate prayers to fulfill his purposes have you ever been pushed to such a state that you prayed out of a lack of desperation have you ever seen God answer that perhaps in a, a different way or in a strange way and and then you look back and you say, well, I can see what God's done now and why he's done it this way, that it's, it's fulfilled his purposes. She had a great prayer. She took the matter to God. If we had time, we could go into chapter 2 and we could see that she has a song and this, the wording is beautiful and uh, very similar. Um, we see years later that Mary, the mother of Jesus, will, will have a similar song as well. But she brought a prayer to God. And then we've seen God's provision. God answered a prayer for a son. And in doing so, that consecrated child um, became a judge for Israel and would turn the people back to God. There was a movement of back to God under Samuel. And Hannah would go on to rear three more boys and two more girls. And Israel had a man of God. Hannah's ongoing love for little Samuel is still recorded here in Scripture because it seems that every year she would make him up a little coat and so that as he grew out of his coat one year she'd have another coat for the next year. And uh, they brought it up, she brought that coat up every year when she travelled up to Shiloh to make sacrifices. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 2, 18 and 19. 18 and 19. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Hannah's pledge to God had cost her. Look, I'm sure she would have wanted to throw her arms around little Samuel and bring him home and every mother would understand what she's gone through but mothers and fathers do you see the need to dedicate your child to God to be that instrument that God will come into their life and, and enable children to come to church and be go to Sunday school and uh, mix with other families within the church that conversation will be around the things of our Lord God. 
the conversation around our Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour, that we love, that helps us through these various trials. Samuel would go on to become a mighty man of prayer, just like his mother. And there are some remarkable lessons that we can learn from this, and even we can just observe certain things. We wonder if Samuel inherited some of his great qualities from his mother. We read there's many stories about the mother of John Wesley that was a remarkable woman for her intelligence and her godliness and executive ability. And she was called the mother of Methodism. So her role as mother to, to John and Charles cannot be overestimated. Another observation. If we consider the, the harsh language, the, the cutting down of Peninnah to Hannah, we can see how much words can hurt and fret, made, or made Hannah fret and even change lives. We can be hard with our tongue. We can be hard with our words. We're to be gentle with our words, to encourage each other and to build each other up. They're, to be, they're not to be weapons. They're to be instruments of healing. In the prayers of Hannah, we can see that we can find comfort in the presence of God. God is a place to retreat to. The Lord Jesus Christ is the God-man that understands us. He's known all the things that we've experienced as a man. And he desires us to share with him. His arms are open to us. Whatever our sorrow, the man of sorrows, understands and calls us to himself. Note that Hannah's silent prayer was heard by God. <clears throat> and we should remember that even our thoughts are heard by God. Our silent prayers are heard and our thoughts are known by God. With They're read by God. Do you remember the prayer in the Psalms? This is 1914. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my Redeemer. I wonder whether you ever slowed down to pray that prayer. We desire to build up acceptable prayer to God. And it's our thoughts, thoughts from the heart that are so important here. Let me read it again. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my Redeemer. From Eli, we learn not to be too hasty in judging people. We can be too hasty in judging another brother or sister in the Lord or not understanding their motives. We don't know what they're going through. We, we don't know. We simply don't know everything. In Hannah's mild and dignified defence of her character, we learn how to defend our rights in all humility. Proverbs tells us, A soft answer turneth away wrath but grievous words stir up anger. So we're not to join in the anger. Look, there's a place to defend yourself, but do so with a soft answer. Do so and tell the truth with love and with, with quietness. Hannah's been rightly recorded, and this account has been put in Scripture. We would say it's in the Hall of Fame of Scripture. And Lockyer writes this, <clears throat> Herbert Lockyer, that's written in many books, whether she was as beautiful as Sarah, we are not told. But because of her inner serenity, she must have had a very sensitive face in which her moods were reflected like sunshine and shadow on a quiet lake. Hannah is a beautiful example of how the most unpleasant and awkward circumstances can produce a character that becomes a blessing to the world, to blessing to those around her. I began with saying that affliction is a good shepherd's black dog, or the good shepherd's affliction is the good shepherd's sheep dog. Affliction drove Hannah into the everlasting arms of her heavenly father. And she became a mother that became a wonderful blessing to Israel. And she was richly blessed in the process with her 
sacrifice. Friends, I've said a little bit earlier on, God is no man's debtor. God is no man's debtor. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you just for all that you are. Lord, we, we would also say in, in, in repeating that statement that God is no man's debtor. Lord, you don't repay us in kind, you repay us in wisdom. We're not talking prosperity doctrine. We're talking, Lord, in ways that you can bless, whether it's within the family, uh, whatever it might be. We thank you that you are such a great God. Lord, we thank you for our mothers. Lord, we know they were, that they were human. We know they have their shortfalls. But we also know they were faithful in, in the sense of rearing and giving birth. Thank you, Lord God, for the blessings of mothers. I pray for the mothers of this church. Lord, I ask your hand of blessing to be upon them. The mothers, the, the Christian mothers, Lord, in the wider circle. Pray your blessing upon them. Lord God, I do pray for mankind at this time. Lord, we're living in, in perhaps dangerous times. There's, there's a danger in a number of different countries at the moment. We would just commit the peace of Israel to you. And Lord, I thank you for this opportunity of prayer here this morning and this opportunity of coming apart. And I thank you for these people that have joined in. And I thank you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless. And we'll catch you the next time we can. Thank you. Bye.